Hello everyone, good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Moments with God. This is Joyce Gannon. I just want to say what a beautiful day it's been today, although I'm still stuck in the same place, walking from home, but uh, yeah, it's been absolutely glorious and I'm sure those of you who went out enjoyed it. So this morning and um, I had a wonderful time in the presence of God and it was it's amazing that some things that we know that we forget in the heat of the moment and and this morning when i woke up i actually woke up at exactly um 4 43 and um i woke up my husband was still in bed he was still sleeping so i thought i'll use the bathroom and i'll take my bible with me to the bathroom so instead i said oh i'll take my phone i just read the bible from my phone until i get back to start my devotion properly big mistake you should never take your phone first thing in the morning so i took my phone with me to the bathroom and then while i was in the bathroom um instead of going to the bible app i saw all the notifications that was on my phone so i started looking at the notification again something you should never do because usually what i do in the morning the first thing i do is do my devotion i take my bible in the bathroom i read my bible pathway come come back to and the bedroom and do my devotion properly and so but i took my phone instead and i was instead of reading my devotion or reading the bible I was looking at my phone so i saw this notification and one particular one just really grabbed my attention and as soon as i picked it up and i just was starting to reply on the comment book at box i just heard the holy spirit said inside of me joyce stop and i was startled a little bit okay joyce stopped you do not wrestle against flesh and blood and <laughs> when when I heard that, I had this such conviction in my spirit because I thought, oh, I really want to respond um, to to the post, and and so I I stopped, and then instead I went into um, Second Corinthians to so just go and remind myself about what the scripture said. And God usually do that with me when he really wants to share something with me. So he starts with this alert, you know, in my spirit. So I turned my um, my Bible. By this time, I'd come back to, to the bedroom. So I picked up my Bible. I went to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And starting from verse 3, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war, war according to, to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in in god for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought captive to the obedience of christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Oh, and I said, Lord, why, uh, I, why do you not let me lose every now and then? And so when I read that and I said, and I started, I went into, you know, communication with God. And I said, Lord, yes, I'm so sorry. I know we do not rest against flesh and blood. And I was starting to say, God, I'm really sorry that even I wanted to start my day with that, um, with res responding to that comment. When I should start my day with praising you that, you know, I, I started praying God, you know, enter the, uh, uh, his gate with thanksgiving in my heart and it's caused with praise. But then I repented. Because I realized that what the Holy Spirit was teaching me was, you know, I'm taking my eyes off the war that I'm in. And that I cannot fight physical, I cannot fight spiritual war with physical weapon. And then I started dialoguing with God. And I said, you know, Lord, I know 
you know, I've taught this, I've I've prayed this, and we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and against power. And so when we know we wrestle not against flesh and blood, then we do not use the flesh and blood weapon to fight spiritual battle. And I said to God, I said, you know, um, you know where I am, so I can't lie to you. You know where I am right now. You know what the, you know, the things that I'm trying to really navigate right now. And so it's hard not to cross over from the things of the spirit to the things of the flesh. But you know what? I can because I'm responsible for what, how I think. I'm responsible for how I, 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 I communicate things. I'm responsible at how I, um, I, um, you know, um, think things over and which is the same mindset that I think I'm, I'm trying to change and I cannot fall in the same, um, in the same, uh, uh, you know, pit. So I started dialoguing with God and I said, God, I really need you to teach me what is going on here. I know I've asked this question. I know you've given me some strategy, but I feel that I, there are things that I still need to learn because until I learn them, I think I'm going to be going, having the struggle of falling out of um, um, knowing exactly what my weapon should be and where to use my uh, physical weapon and where to use my spiritual weapon. I said, well, first of all, I need to understand this. When you said that the things that I'm dealing with is not physical, what is it? Because the things that I'm reacting against is the actions of humans. So if I, and I think it, does, it, it demands a humanistic response. You know, so and God said to me, that's where you're getting it wrong, because the spirit that the, the things that you are fighting against is not actually flesh and blood, because that's just a manifestation. God, you know, because the, the a spirit has to occupy a person in order to bring an action to provoke a reaction. And so the things I'm fighting against. So it's, it's God said that teaching me that Joyce, you know. And the spirit, the, 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 the struggles and the things, the injustice that you are fighting that you think you want to start and you want to fight. Yes, it is right that you do that, but don't go about it the wrong way because otherwise you cross over from, from fighting a spiritual battle into actually fighting with human beings. How many arguments have you been uh, um, involved in? And how many of those arguments have you won? And look at the ones that you've tried to dialogue and actually prayed and, and you've spoken the things that I've given you to speak. And how many hearts have you reached by doing that? Just one on one conversation. And I said this many and then that many circles. So you need to compare the two and see where you are winning and see where you are losing. And so then I realized, and I said, okay, God, what is the spirit behind racism? What is the spirit behind oppression? And what is the spirit behind, um, behind um, prejudice? And you know what really shocked me? Something that I've never thought about. The Holy Spirit says to me, the thing behind it is the spirit of fear. The spirit behind racism, the spirit behind um, um, prejudice, the spirit behind oppression is fear. The spirit of fear is the one that wraps itself up in different you know, ways to attack the children of God. And so if you open yourself up to that spirit, it will use you. It doesn't matter who you are. And so God so God said they're really teaching me stuff about, you know, how to deal with um, uh, this, uh, how to, how to, the strategies and the weapon to use the, in, in fighting the spirit of racism and injustice. And God took me, he said, look, this is nothing new. And this, if you look at the, 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 you know, the, the source and the origin of this, it's not something that is it, just yesterday. Okay, we know that the, uh, the, the black race has been going through this over 400 and, you know, over 400 years in America. But way, way before then, it happened with the children of Israel. And, and when the Holy Spirit showed me this scripture, it blew my mind. And what he did was took me to um, Exodus, reminded me of Exodus, Exodus chapter 1, verses 1, chapter 1, um, um, chapter 1 from verse 7. So Exodus 1 from 7. 
And you will know how the children of Israel, obviously, they went to Egypt because Joseph was there and then moving forward after Joseph died. So verse, let's pick it up from verse 7. Verse 7 says, But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them. Are you following that? So there is a fear there that they are growing mightier than them. And when it comes to the, to the, to the, um, you know, the slaves that were sold, that were, in, that, that were taken to America, even when they said they were freed, people could see the things in them, that, that spirit, that tenacity, that determination, that zeal, that hard working, that, you know, the, just the intelligence that they have. And I believe that it was the same fear that was in operation. Look at them. If we give them a level playing field, if we allow them to grow Mightier. We've seen them in our cotton field. We've seen them. We've seen how hard working they are. If we allow them and if they have this same determination and this same stamina with which they've worked in our fields and if they take it to work in their own field, who knows what they'll become. They'll become, they'll be, they will be mightier than us. So therefore, let us deal shrewdly with them and they were afraid that in the events of war that the children of israel would team up with their enemy to fight against them therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens oh my goodness so the Holy Spirit was teaching me that what you are saying this is the, you know is not a new thing so the same thing that happened to the children of Israel is what is happening to the um, uh, black community in America today and even all over the world. It's just that, you know, it's worse in some places than others. And I understood that in order to win that, just like the children of Israel cried unto the Lord and Lord God sent them a deliverer, it is the same way we need to cry unto the Lord. And the Holy Spirit started teaching me that, yes, there are weapons that we need at this time to fight injustice, to fight this spirit that has come to actually divide the body. You know, when I speak, I'm already speaking into the body of Christ to seek to divide. And when, and there's, and when I actually look at the people that I've argued with in these last two weeks, and I notice the pattern in, the, in them, that, you know, that people who are insecure in themselves, that is actually not manifesting in the spirit, spiritual, that you need a discerning spirit to detect. And people who are fearful. And if you look at the people that are oppressed today, even the, the, um, uh, the black um, um, people who, who, have been, who are successful, who are doctors, who are consultants, and when I hear their experiences at work, now, this scripture makes sense. There is a fear. There is a fear there that, that needs to be dealt with. So, when there's a spirit that needs to be dealt with. And this spirit of fear and, and insecurity, and there's also the second one, is a spirit of jealousy. I don't have time to read the scripture, but when you look at Genesis 37, and look at Joseph, you know, see... It's, it's always about killing a dream. It's always about, it's only, it's always, it's a fear about what other people or the other person will become. And as, as this happens on, even on, in, on, on individual levels, as well as governmental level, as well as nations against nations. So it happens, you see, it's a spirit of fear and of jealousy because the, the, um, the, what the Joseph's um, brothers do to him, because he had a dream. All he did 
was dream and share his dream. And they understood the dream and they understood where God was taking Joseph. And because of that, they wanted to kill the dream before the dream materialized. It's the same spirit, the same spirit of jealousy that made Satan wanted to kill the seed of the woman before it was even born. And this morning at five o'clock, I'm sitting there going, wow, wow, wow which woke up my husband, by the way. And God started teaching me, he said, Joyce, the, the spirit of insecurity and jealousy is the spirit behind racism. It's the spirit behind oppression. You know, and it's that spirit that wants to control and to manipulate and to keep somebody down, you know, to keep people that they feel might rise up. And even when you look at um, places of work today, you don't see them wanting to oppress the cleaners. The black cleaners in the building, they are not being oppressed. They are not being held down. In fact, people love them because they are not a challenge, you know? And these people, even in that, they do, you can see the effort they put in, in cleaning and, you know, the determination, wanting to know this is not my life. One day I'm going to rise above this. And you can see it in their faces when you, when you see them at work. I see them at work, you know, I was that. And then, but the people do, who are suppressed, the people who are oppressed, the people who promotions are, are, are delayed are those that people are frightened of because, because they don't know. They, so I said, God, what are they afraid of? Because, you know, this is it's a job and you have, if you excel in your job and I excel in my job, we are both excelling. What is there to be frightened of? And what I couldn't quite understand is when, I mean, the children, the, 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 the slaves the, in, in, in America at the time, they had nothing. Their, their masters had everything. What could they possibly be afraid of if not, if not for their destiny? And then I'm starting to realize that the African Americans, they have a destiny in this end time. They have a destiny. God showed me this before. They have a destiny in ushering in the coming of the Lord. They have a part to play in the end times. I mean, look at it. Who are more forgiven than Africans? Or, or blacks who are more forgiving we forgive over and over and over and over and over who cry out to god the most who are those who are like favorites in prayer is them so they have a crucial role to play in this entire and that is what the enemy seeks to to want to destroy that's what the enemy wants to seek to destroy. And when we stand to want to argue these things out, we are actually not fighting this the right way. So I asked God, what is my role? Because I thought you told me that this year that you were giving, you were opening up my voice at the beginning of this year. So now I, I said, God, what do you, what, how, what part do I have to play? What do I just keep quiet and pray and intercede? And because I'm fighting, against i'm not fighting against flesh and blood so it is so i god opened my eyes to see how the spirit works so it grips the mind of those it controls and they genuinely think what they believe of the other is true so when i stand there i want to engage in arguments something literally just come up they they actually can't hear me. So if you if you try to engage them to change their mind, they can't hear you because they believe they're just waiting for you to draw a breath so they can tell you what they believe. And some just think there's no point in arguing. I know what I believe. I'll just cover this. My I'll just I'll just throw do a throw away line to say oh yes it's evil what is going on what happened to george floyd is evil i just use that to come so once i say that nobody will prod deeper but you know the holy spirit is prodding he will prod your heart he will prod your heart because you cannot silence people just by agreeing with them um, just by saying, yeah, what happened to George Floyd is evil, but it's not about what happened to George Floyd. It's why what happened to him happened to him. It's why that thing is woven in the fiber of a society. It's why the founder, I mean, like the, the, the church, 
you know, believe that what is going on is right because they've been taught it was right because it's, it was the same thing that backed up. It was their reason for slavery. And so they changed, they, 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 they replaced um, uh, s s uh, slavery with, um, with another, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, with another um, um, policy to just keep people where they are. And so you mask that's with Christianity. You mark that with good works. You mark that by saying, yeah, I agree with you know what happened. Obviously, that was evil. But why did what happened happen? Is a spirit. And that we open our hearts up as believers to allow these things into our hearts. And that is why when we all go before God, that is why those whose hearts are tender, they, they are, they, their hearts broken over the things that happen. And this morning, I mean, like, God is showing me this thing, actually even just showing me hearts of the people that I've engaged with in discussions. And some of them, I wouldn't necessarily call them discussion, like we engage in like shouting match to see whose voice is, you know, <laughs> loudest. But God, was, the Holy Spirit was saying, you know, look at those people that you have actually had a quiet me because in your prayer time you've prayed and God has asked you to either send them a message or send them a test or send them something. And how many of those have you seen with a changed heart? Because their heart is tender, because their heart is tender towards him so they can receive this. So if you want to engage in a battle, in a verbal battle or argument, you are not going to win. And so in the way to fight this battle, is to use spiritual weapon. And so he said they believe what they believe is truth. So arguments and debates will not change the minds of a racist as he or she holds on to their own belief and cannot be changed except by the spirit of truth. So you cannot fight a spiritual war, Joyce, with a physical weapon. And I sat there and I said, God, you need to teach me what to do. What is the weapon of this battle? How do we fight this battle? And how can we win this battle? And he gave me two words. And, 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 you know, and, and he said, you fight this with <laughs> love and truth. Truth cannot be denied. And the love cannot be denied. Not by fake love. Not by put up love. Joyce, you really need to walk from a place of my love. And he said, and you need to speak the truth from that place. And I was undone because I was forgetting that when these things first happened, he spoke to me and said to me, Joyce, this is not a black and white issue. This is not about, you know, human issue. It's an evil. It's a spirit. It's, a, it's an evil spirit that we need to deal with. But I did it. And, and, and that's where I was. That's where I was. But then the more you engage with people and the people you think are reasonable people, and then you see this this backlash and thinking, oh my God. So I've been sitting next to you all this time. I've been talking to you all this time. We've had a relationship all this time. And this is what is in your heart. And then it's hard not to cross over to that place of fighting with, with just words. But you know what? I want, if you are in that place, like I, I had, you know, been occasionally, we need to come back. We need to come back to ask God for strategy. Do your research, do your st study, because he says that we can only overcome this with truth. And we can over only overcome this with love because the Bible said, you know, perfect love cast out all fear. So we need to be praying as believers that those who have this belief and those who have allowed this evil spirit to, 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 to dwell in their hearts and those who have embraced it, but all those who have partnered with it, even just by making excuses about you, you brought this on yourself. And if you will not carry guns and if you will not do drugs and if you will not do this all if you won't do this i mean i can sit here and roll it i mean my my job allows me to be in a position where i see the demographics so i can sit here and say to people oh well you know you can say this but let me tell you that that's not how this is going to be won this is going to be won by actually showing love to say 
to the God, you are the God of love. Only you can change the hearts and minds of people. Those people that have been banned up by the spirit. You know, when I saw it's like, really, it's almost like, um, 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 you know, you know, when, when the picture I have, when, when I, when I read the scripture where it says, put on the whole armor of God, you know, with all these uh, Roman soldiers, that's what the pictures that always come to my, to mind when I read that scripture. But when I, what I was seeing this morning with this, um, stronghold of the mind, you know, that is come through with this spirit of fear. And, you know, there's no need to be afraid. If you have God, if you believe in God, if you trust God, if you have the spirit of truth in you and you have the, the power of the Holy Spirit in you, there's no need to be afraid. You know, perfect love cast out all fear. And really, if you say you love God, and in church on Sunday, my, my pastor read this beautiful scripture. And in the end, I didn't know why this thing was not, you know, really, um, um, really it was so important that I, 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 I added um, verse 20 of, um, of um, 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 First John that my pastor was reading where he says, if you, sit, if you, if you profess to, to love God, but you do not love your brother, then, then you are a liar. Because if you cannot love your brother, you see, how can you love me? You cannot see. I don't, it was so important to me to, to, to write that. And I didn't know why, but this morning I knew why. And as far as I was writing it, I knew then, yes, it was speaking to my heart because, and it, this morning, say, Joyce, you need to love, love, love. You love unconditionally, not dependent on whether you are loved back, not dependent of whether somebody has a change of heart, not dependent about if they agree with you, that you need to love them. And it says that when your obedience is fulfilled, it's so when your obedience is fulfilled. So I'm obeying what he says. My, my, my aspect of it is to love and to speak. And he's asked me to speak, but to speak from a place of truth. So I am speaking the truth of what it is to say, you know, so I'm also giving strategies as I receive them. I don't have the fullness. I don't have the full picture. I don't have the full uh, weapon, but I know the Holy Spirit told me this morning that the weapon of this war is love and truth. And until we ask from that place, we are just going to be coming against arguments upon arguments. We're going to be arguing physical argument against the spirit that rises itself above the knowledge of God. The spirit of racism, that's what it wants to do. It wants to rise itself above the knowledge of God. And that is what we have to come against. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, as you have revealed to me this morning, Father, because who you have revealed, you have given authority. So I take authority over the spirit of fear. I take authority over the spirit of jealousy. I speak, take authority over the spirit of insecurity. Father, that come to plague the mind of your children. Father, that we may see the truth of who we are in you because this, that the fear comes from a place of, 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 of orphan spirit. But Father, and we have the confidence of who we are in you. That we know we are your children. And that we will come to realize our identity in you. So Father, I speak to, I, 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 I pray for all those people who are walking, Father, in the spirit of fear, of insecurity, of jealousy, Father. And I just pray that they will come to a place of sonship in you. And that the brokenness in their hearts and, and also is from a place of shame. They, if they disagree that their forefathers did something wrong, if they, if they disagree that, you know, oppression and injustice is wrong and it needs to be removed from the constitution, that is agreeing that what their father, that they held, they hold in such high esteem, as, uh, uh, esteem that what they did was wrong. But you know what? There is no shame. It's never too late. I read, um, uh, um, uh, Morgan Freeman's text. He said that you're never too old <laughs> to get a revelation. And I'm glad he's got a revelation. So, Father, I just pray that the spirit of truth, Father, will fill all our heart, that individually that we can go to you and receive that spirit of truth and that that spirit of truth also share your love above in our heart that we can express that love to those who need it. 
in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Bless you. Have a lovely day. And you need to just go in the presence of God. Put on the worship music. Let all the words that has come against you, let it all wash off. And then just receive wholeness from God. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. See you soon.